Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you one of my mathematics textbooks. This is Precalculus Functions and Graphs by Earl Swakowski. And in this video, we're just going to take a close look at this book. First, let me say that uh, this book is probably widely available. You can probably find copies. Um, so, yeah, should not be hard to find. So on the inside cover, we have all of these formulas, which is really useful. These are all formulas that honestly, you know, you, you will know all of these after you, you know, work through a book like this or work through a similar book. Here you have a couple others for geometric figures. These come up sometimes in calculus. Precalculus Functions and Graphs by Earl Swakowski, Marquette University. This is a good book for self-study. You can buy a book like this and sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and work through the math. Here's the copyright. So you see it's from the 80s. The 80s. Cool. From the 1980s. Here's a look at the contents. Real numbers and graphs. Functions. Polynomial and rational functions. Exponential and logarithmic functions. The trigonometric functions, so it's got trig in it as well, analytic trigonometry, applications of trigonometry, systems of equations and inequalities, sequences and series, topics in analytic geometry, and then some appendices. And you have answers to the odd numbered problems. So if you wanted to learn math using this book, just know that this book covers the material that is typically taught in the US in two courses. Uh, the first one would be pre-calculus and the second one would be trigonometry. So in theory, if you're taking pre-calc or trig in a college level course, you could buy this book and you can use it to do extra practice problems and to supplement what you're learning. What I really like about books like this versus other more popular um, mainstream newer books that you can get like on Amazon for even perhaps less money, there's a lot of really good workbooks is that this is an actual textbook. This is not a workbook. It's an actual textbook with definitions and exercises and explanations. It's written in a textbook format. Let's just open up to a random page. We can look at it. See what we have here. Analytic trigonometry. Figure 6-1. Got some images there. Jump to something else. What else we got? Systems of inequalities. That's something that um, you don't really see a lot of. You would study this typically uh, sometimes in a pre-cal class sometimes or sometimes uh, in a college algebra class. You would study systems of inequalities. Let's see if they have some harder examples. Here we go. Example four. Find the solutions and sketch the graph of the system. X plus Y less than or equal to four. 2x minus y less than or equal to 4. So we have two lines, and it looks like they're solving for y first. That's a good way to do it, because then you can graph the line 4 minus x, and you can shade below it because it's less than. And then you graph the line 2x minus 4, and you shade above it because it's greater than. And because you have an equal to part in both inequalities, you use solid lines. Whereas if it was like a less than or a greater than, you would use a dotted line. And then here you see the picture. Oh, this is good. Look, they have the picture here. See if we can make sense of it. So what I say below the line four minus x. So here's four minus x. The so shading below it, so this area here, and then here's um, two x minus four. Right, two x minus four is this one. Okay, so you're shading above it, so it's over here. So so below this one, and above this one. So we're gonna get this area here. So again, it's below this line, so down here, and above this one, so up here. So the darker area, the shaded area, is where they intersect. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. You've got four inequalities in example five. So stuff like this is nice. It's got, you know, good examples. The page quality is also very good, and it's a hardcover. It's a hardcover. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it, and if I can find it, I will leave a link in the description for you so you can check it out. I should also mention that I, I bought this book because um, someone left a comment about it. Um, I actually remember who it was, someone who was always posting comments here on the channel. I always 
uh, frequent here on the channel. So he's got some good comments and he suggested this book. So I got it and I'm happy I did. So thank you for this suggestion. Linear programming. This is a topic that's typically not covered. Uh, it's often found in books, but like it's just, I, I've, I've never taught it and it's often skipped, it's often skipped. Sequences in series. So this is something you study in a pre-calc course. So it's in this book because it is, you know, called pre-calculus. And this is something you also see in Calc 2. Take a look here. Ooh, it starts with mathematical induction. This is one of those things that's really hard to learn. This is kind of like everyone's first real experience with proofs. You know, when you first learn uh, induction, it's like, oh, what is this, this mystical procedure? Here it tells you what induction is. Suppose S is a set of positive integers. Well, here it is down here. That's the, that's the axiom of mathematical induction. Let's look at this one here. If with each positive integer n, there is an associated statement P sub n, then all the statements P sub n are true, provided the following two conditions are satisfied. So one is that P sub one is true. That means that the statement is true when you plug in one. Two, whenever k is a positive integer such that PK is true, then P sub k plus one is also true. And they prove it here. And then here you have like your first induction proof. The sum of the first n positive integers is n times n plus one over two. It's funny they wrote it uh, in words like that. So here they have it down here. Okay, they write it as a statement. There's your, there's your statement, p sub n. So the first case is to prove, um, looks like they prove it when n is equal to two. They start with two on the proof. You could just also start with one. You could certainly do that. I think the reason they start with, oh no, they're just checking it. They're just checking it. They're just, they're just observing. Here are some, follow, so the following are some special cases of P sub n. So if n is two, they just check it. If n is three, they check it, right, right. They're just, you know, saying, hey, does this formula actually work? You know, maybe plug in some numbers, make sure it's good. And then they go through the proof on the second page and show you, and they do start with one. They do it here. If we substitute n equals one in p sub n, then the left hand side contains only the number one in the right hand side. There we go. Then step two, assume that pk is true. Thus the induction hypothesis is, right? So you get to write that down. Mm -hmm. So they add uh, k plus one to both sides of the equation and they end up with that and they perform the addition and they show the second step that p sub k plus one is true. So if, you, if you've seen this before, it's very routine. If you haven't seen it, I definitely encourage you to uh, check out induction. Uh, let me just uh, pump myself here. I do have videos. Uh, I have a video on this proof and also on this one. I have most of the induction things, uh, the common induction proofs. Uh, well, I don't know if I proved the binomial theorem yet, but I do have a lot of induction proofs on my channel. I have a playlist induction. So this is cool. This is expanding. So here we're expanding using um, well, I guess the binomial theorem, but you can use Pascal's triangle. That's how I do it, which the coefficients in the triangle are called the binomial coefficients. So here it says, the binomial coefficients for a plus b to the five were calculated in example one. And they give you a and b and n equals five in the theorem and you get this expansion. That's something you learn in pre-calc. You learn in pre-calc, expanding using the binomial theorem. Also finding specific terms. Like find the fifth term in the expansion of x cubed plus the square root of y and that whole thing is to the 13th power. So that's something you would also learn in pre-calc. So this book has uh, a lot of exercises, you can see. Let's take a look at the answers so we can see what those are like. They have answers to the odd numbered problems. Pretty good. Pretty good. Solid book. Solid book. So should you buy this book? Uh, it just depends up to, it's up to you, I would say, right? Obviously, if you have the money and you want to buy a math book, then sure, it's a good math book. Um, what's this? Inverse functions. It's got my attention now. A function f with domain d and range e is one to one if whenever a is not equal to b, then f of a is not equal to f of b. Right, yes. And you can state that, you can state it differently too. You can say that if f of a is equal to f of b, then a is equal to b. That would be the contrapositive of of that definition, but sometimes stated that way too. Hmm. Inverse functions are something you see uh, here. 
And then they come up later in other areas of math. Um, see them in other math classes as well, especially if you're a math major. You'll do a lot more of this with inverse functions. Here's some examples where you have to find the inverse. They're pretty easy. These are really comparable to the ones you would do in a regular math class that you would take today. So they're not too bad. So I would say this is a, a good book for beginners, uh, a good book for uh, self-study. And I recommend it to anyone who, who is looking to learn more uh, algebra and trig or pre-calc and trig. Here you have some identities to verify. So you see, this verse is like a workbook. Uh, I think this is better. So I, I think I recently uh, I made a couple of videos on uh, workbooks. Uh, there's a bunch of really good ones by uh, Chris McMullen. And there's a couple other ones, um, the Big Fat Notebook series. Those are also really popular right now. They're on Amazon and they're not expensive. That's the thing with these books, right? They're, they're you know, I, I don't know what they cost, but like, you know, they're 10 to $25 um, a book and it's new and you have all these practice problems. But, but I think what even myself, I tend to forget when I'm talking about those books is that they're not textbooks, right? This is the textbook. This is going to have a lot more knowledge than those workbooks have. And it's just a hard cover. It's just a solid textbook. New, this book is probably quite expensive. Uh, if you can find the new edition of this book. Oh, we have some interesting stuff here. Let's explore what we found in our book. Looks like we've got an assignment here. California State University, Chico, Department of Mathematics, Fall 1988. That's cool. That's cool. So it's an old syllabus, right? Oh, look at this. You've got some, some, uh, some interval definitions here. The absolute value of A. Yeah, that's, that's very, very key. Oh, yeah, look. They're trying to understand, how could it be negative? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, right. Negative and negative is positive. So they're taking the absolute value of negative 2, which is negative, negative 2. And then like negative one times negative, they put a little X there. That's two. Okay, that's why it's positive. That's why it's why it's okay. Because people always say, oh, absolute value can't be negative. And then you look at this definition and you see a negative where you're like, what? So this person, apparently back in the 80s, whoever this person was, their name is not on the paper, was confused by that. And, and they decided to verify that. I think that's so cool. I think it's so cool. I got to smell it. I'm sorry. It's got to whiff it. Oh, what a piece of history, right? California State University, Chico, right? That's cool. That's really cool. Anyways, uh, that's, that's, I should take a look, closer look at that some other time, but uh, I'll keep this video short. It got a little bit too long here. Um, great book for people trying to learn. Uh, just a random video where I show you one of my math books. I just thought I would make this one because um, it's a good book. Good luck.